in my Facebook group. So, all right, so we are live. Hi. Everyone, just so excited, and hopefully, people start joining in. But um, very excited to have you to have you here, girl, uh, because you know we recently met, and I think uh, it's it's always like love at first sight. <laughs> career and what we do and who we serve and the message that we have so very excited you know to have you here and uh, what i'm going to do is um i'm going to later on uh download this video and uh post it in um youtube and then send you a link so you can download it and um and you can use it if you want to that sounds great, Argentina. And thank you for having me. You're my new BFF. <laughs> Yay, I love that. Anyway, um, so for whoever is uh, watching this this uh, live stream, you know, later on, let me give you a little bit of introduction. Um, if any of you are new to my Facebook group, my name is Argentina. And uh, for the last 13 years, I have been helping women like you feel beautiful and confident, elevate your self-esteem, fall in love with your body through voodoo photography, love retreats, and personal coaching. And today, I want to introduce you, Ardenay Gardner. Gardner, Gardner. <laughs> my English is under my tongue, like, you know, uh, gets stuck here. But... Um, Ardene is a licensed master social worker and a certified professional coach. And she is the author of an amazing book called Divine Invitations, The Seven Spiritual Lessons of Relationships, A Survivor's Guide to Finding Meaning in the Messiness of Relationships. I just absolutely love that. By the way, I just bought the book. Thank yes. you. Yes. 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 So I got the Kindle it. version and then the paperback uh, version because what what I'm doing is I, I'm keeping uh, my favorite books in the studio, and then I'm, I'm telling people about these books when they come in, in, into the studio, and then um, I tell them which one do you want to as a gift, and then I order it in Amazon for them, you know, as a gift. So you're probably gonna get you know some books that I'm gonna be buying for my clients from you. So. You are such a jewel, Argentina. Your clients must be so grateful to have you. Well, I try to give as much value as I can to my, my audience, just like you. So let's get started here, Ardeen. Um, tell us what inspired you to write Divine Invitations. Oh, well, I'll say that uh, I'm a journaler. And about, whew, I've been journaling probably, let's see, I'm 44. So I've been journaling at least for 24 years. And periodically I'll review my journal entries and then I'll see some of the triumphs that I've overcame. And I'm like, oh my goodness, this could possibly help someone else. So I was honestly inspired to write uh, Divine Invitations by the toxic relationships that I've had in the past with men. Um, discovering my personal relationship with God and even going to an institution um, for spiritual development. All of those experiences inspired me to write this book where I take people on a journey of some of my experiences with men and the significant lessons that I've learned from each of those relationships. Um, you know, in one relationship, I was abused. Um, by someone who was my first love, my first everything, my first adult relationship, and that devastated me. It broke my heart. Then in another relationship, I had an entanglement, if you will, with a male exotic dancer, and I discovered my passion and creativity. And then in another relationship, you know, it, it was my soul made, and I was able to experience unconditional love. And so all of these relationships helped me identify more of my truth, but they taught me a lot of valuable things of how I was misrepresenting myself, how I was not showing up in the world authentically or honestly, how I was afraid to ask for what I wanted. Um, it taught me how I didn't think that I was beautiful or I didn't think that I was good enough or lovable or that I'd ever find someone to love and accept me for me. Um, in the last chapter, I, I have to say, that's the chapter where I talk about my divine mate, my husband, and 
the relationship and the lesson that I've learned from being with him is that he accepts me totally who I am, flaws and all, um, you know, and he loves on what I would call, you know, not, I would call my ugliness, if you will. And so that's probably the relationship that allows me to experience all of those, all of those other lessons um, gracefully because, you know, being with him um, is totally, totally just uh, like being in heaven, but it's the greatest relationship of all, which is me learning how to embrace all of who I am and show up who I am and, and feeling, uh, you know, good on my good days and not so good days, but still being loved and accepted by a man who really just appreciates me for being a human being, not mm -hmm. for being this facade or anything like that. That's unbelievable. That's we all struggle with that. We have to all learn to be in relationships, especially with the other sex. And, you know, I had my share of them. And, um, you know, I, I don't know, I don't speak for everybody else, but I know that, um, I mean, I didn't have physical abuse, but definitely there was some sort of mental abuse, you know, a little bit. And, uh, and they make, it's like, I was feeling like it was my fault, you know, right? That there was something wrong with me, that I was unlovable. So um, tell us about the message that you hope the reader could take away from reading the book. I know there's a lot of in my audience, there's a lot of women that tell me that they got out of uh, an abusive relationship and they stay there for 10, 20, 30 years, you know? So how would this book help them? So, as a survivor, this book, I hope offers someone hope and encouragement that you will also survive. You can get out of that toxic or abusive relationship if you reach out uh, for support, if you just ask for help. I know for me, the biggest thing was sharing um, my abuse with someone else so I could actually get help and support and encouragement. That was a big hurdle for me to cross. So this book, walks a woman through, you know, the toxic relationship that they have with themselves per se and, and thinking that they're not worthy or that they don't deserve anything better than the current relationship that they're in. So it's really a tool where at the end of each chapter, you have specific strategies on how to exercise forgiveness in your relationship or how to be honest and authentic, how to experience unconditional love, how to develop your faith so that you can trust the process, you can go through the steps, you can build that self-confidence. Um, so someone is gonna get a, a different message from reading it depending on where they are in their current situation. But ultimately, I want the readers to walk away with being able to identify their passion, develop their faith and self-confidence to do whatever it is. If it's to leave the relationship, if it's to seek counseling, if it's to start a business, if it's to buy a house, relocate to another city or become an executive director or just retire early and go live on the beach somewhere. Um, it, it helps you develop that confidence. And then the other thing is I want people to walk away with the ability to pursue entrepreneurship on their own terms. So mm -hmm. identifying their passion, developing their faith and pursuing some level of entrepreneurship, which doesn't mean you have to start a business, but it's identifying that creativity within you and then being innovative in however you choose to be innovative. That's ultimately what I want people to walk away with. You have full empowerment in every aspect. And it is so funny how it starts with um, really first, as you said, fixing the toxic relationship with yourself in order to emerge as the empowered woman that can really tackle any area of your life uh, with a similar approach of self-respect and self-love and empowerment and you know and I think when we do that we attract more people that support your vision and character like in your case I think you totally attract your husband <laughs> tell us a little bit about that story I think you told me a little bit about it but tell us again when you finally found the one to really you know, <sighs> <laughs> so I love talking about uh, 
my husband and that experience, I call him King G because uh, he's definitely my king. But honestly, I'm very spiritual. And so I'm moved by the Holy Spirit that's present within me. And I recall very vividly um, on April 30th in May, I mean, excuse me, April 30th in 2010, when the Holy Spirit said, now will be a good time to go take a break. So I was like, oh, no, I'm in the groove of work. I didn't want to stop. But the, the 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 voice got stronger and stronger and said, no, now would be a good time to go take a break um, and go get you a, a granola bar out of the vending machine. So I listened and I did just that. And as I was walking out of the door of my department, there was this beautiful mocha chocolate man standing up against the wall talking on a telephone. And as I was walking into the cafeteria, I for a minute thought I heard him like, tried to get my attention. And I was like, no, nah, I can't be because obviously he's on the phone. So, you know, I'm just hearing things. So I got my granola bar out of the vending machine. Then I went outside and sat in the break area at one of the um, picnic tables. And then lo and behold, he comes outside and sit directly across from me on the table, but he's still on the phone. So now I'm slightly annoyed. I'm thinking, why is this man with all of the space in the tables out in the area. Why is he sitting directly across from me talking on the telephone? So, you know, the mocha chocolate fine man didn't look as attractive until he got off the phone and, and we started having a small talk and he asked me my name and what I do. And we decided to link up for lunch and uh, meet later that week to go on a walk around the campus. And Honest to goodness, he was sharing, you know, things about his mom and his children and and how he loved family. And we just talked and walked and talked. And needless to say, um, we got to know each other a little bit. But you go figure after about a week of us having those exchanges, I didn't see or hear from him for a good two months, like it was wow. two, two months. I'm like, what happened? And ghosted. <laughs> yeah. So he had misplaced my phone number and I never got his phone number and I gave him my work number. So it's not like I could track it on a cell phone back then. And so I didn't know if he was dead or alive. I didn't know if he got a new job. I didn't know if I said something offensive during the conversation. But the next time I saw him, I was totally excited. I gave him my personal number. I took his number because I was like, I don't want to lose contact with you again. Mm -hmm. And um, we continue to build our friendship. But the part that I'm missing on Argentina, I almost forgot. So the day after I met my husband, I had to do a photo shoot for my class, my um, spiritual development class. And part of that photo shoot was, you know, I chose to dress in all white and People say I look like Mother, uh, Mother Teresa just because I had a head wrap and I decided to dress um, how I was feeling on the inside and I discovered my inner beauty. But that particular day, as I was going around masquerading as Mother Teresa, if you will, um, I went by my niece's house and she was like, oh, my goodness, you look so beautiful. You look like you're getting married. And in that moment, I kind of exercised the law of attraction. I said, well, yeah, I, I am. I'm getting married to to Fred, which is my husband's name. And she was like, oh, OK. So she told everybody in the house I was getting married and everybody's going along with this charade and they run to the door. They know there's no one in the car. But on that day, Argentina, I had actually claimed my husband. And seven years later, we married. But I actually claimed it. And it was on the same day that I had for the first time in my entire life saw myself as beautiful on the inside and out unbelievable oh it's exactly what i preach it's exactly what i preach until we see ourselves our own beauty we can we then allow the, the world to actually see that from us but otherwise you know I, i've been in the uh, you know, spent 20 years, you know, trying to get people to like me and to love me, but I couldn't do it myself. And the so moment I, I did it, I actually had to get a lot of people out of my life because it's like, this is not what I want. And uh, like you, I'm still waiting for my king, but I'm still not looking because I'm too busy and it's like, I cannot give him the time he deserves right now. 
you know, so anyway, let's go back to you. So now that you are a published author, what's in the horizon for you? Oh, that's a great question. I'm looking to do virtual book clubs. You know, it, it sucks that we're still in a pandemic. And when I thought about becoming a published author uh, almost 10 months ago, I never thought that we'd be limited to traveling. Mm -hmm. um, and I never thought that I'd be doing everything virtually. So I'm going to do some book clubs. I'm going to design some workshops to help um, empower women and, you know, and learn to heal from those toxic relationships. Um, I plan to write a second book, but I don't want to start that yet because like I said, this first book took seven years. And so that was a journey. I don't anticipate the next book to be as long, but I want to just enjoy the moment of having this first book published. I also plan to do some interviewing um, I because I am a survivor of domestic violence. I want to connect with other survivors around the globe and have them tell and share their stories of survivorship. So I'm looking to do that, uh, possibly uh, join some podcast and continue to network with beautiful people like yourself and participate in their journeys and share their stories and just continue to encourage women, you know, I'm on a mission to um, support 79,000 women in identifying their passion, developing their faith and pursuing entrepreneurship on their own terms. And I really want to connect with these women one on one because someone um, mentored me, someone supported me. And I just believe through mentorship and advocacy, everyone could be great. And so I'm, I'm really on a, a personal mission to connect with 79,000 women to do that. Why 79,000? 79,000, a lot of people say like, why? where did you come up with that number? So my mom was 79 years old when she passed away in 2019. And I remember from a workshop that I attended with Steve Harvey, he said, whatever you do, if you want to grow, you want to increase your effort in multiples of 10. So I believe in the first year of me being a published author, I can connect with 79 women because 79 is significant of my mom's age. And so the second year, if I increase my effort by 10, that'll be 790 women. And then year three, 7,900 women. And then year four, 79,000 women. So I'm looking to connect with 79,000 women between one to five years from now. And that's how the 79,000 came about. It reminds me of my mom. And I really wanted her to get my book before she passed. Because she's like, I want to be the first one to get your book. And unfortunately, I wasn't able to deliver it to her. So I want to make this mission um, symbolic of her. Oh, that is beautiful. Talking about you know, really being committed and inspired um, and have a, a goal in mind. So it, it's still hard. Yeah, you were in a workshop with him. You had no idea he had workshops. He did. I want to say back in 2015, he did what was called a SOAR retreat for women in Doral, mm -hmm. Florida. And it was phenomenal. He had all types of speakers. There was like a three-day retreat workshop. Um, I have pictures. That was the first retreat I ever took pictures with celebrities because I usually hide behind the camera, um, but it was really phenomenal. I don't know if he's still doing it, but I learned so much from that workshop. And you know, they would have us write down, what do you want to do in the next six months, 12 months? And one of my goals, I remember I put down is I want to host my own radio show. Little did I know that within one month of me leaving that workshop, I was hosting my own radio show. It was short lived, oh, but I was still doing it. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I'm not gonna do it again. Uh yeah, talk, call, talking about you know the law of attraction, you know, it's it's amazing that I think that the big one of the biggest problems or challenges that we have is that we don't dare to dream. Yes. Yes, you hit the nail on the head. We have no right to, to dream about having a radio show, having a book published, being on TV, being a promotion, being a CEO, because it's like, you know, who am I to think that I can deserve this? 
and uh, it's, it's just a mindset thing. So um, I'm very interested if you want to create a you know, workshop um, because you as a social worker, um, what do you see the biggest needs that women have that are in relationships where there is some sort of abuse? Well, I'll just speak from personal experience uh, because my practice did not involve me working specifically with survivors or women experience domestic violence. But one of the significant things is just knowing that there's a different, we can make a different choice. It's um, knowing that we don't have to accept this, but at the same time, we have to keep safety at the forefront because every decision we make, every move we make could impact our safety and it's a life or death situation. And so it's really about being strategic and being mindful and knowing the uh, partner's triggers. And that's a lot of pressure that we have to have on us because we're already living fearfully. Yeah. Then we have to be mindful that we don't trigger and set this individual off. Then if you have children, you have to be mindful that you're protecting your children. So there's so much stress and just trying to survive the day that it's it's really like in the moment, okay, do is there enough time for me to grab a few things and escape or flee? And if I'm going to flee, you have to know where you're going. You have to know if your abuser has connections to that place. There's just so much strategy. But the biggest thing for me was just asking for help. Once I opened my mouth and asked for help, I was amazed at how people were willing to support me. Um, and, and my abuser never knew. I mean, people went shopping for me. They said, if you're going to move out, I'm going to go and help furnish your apartment. I'll get you, you know, all the things you need to clean. They said, I'd pick you up. We can go to the store. You can store these things at my house. And so when you're ready to go, I'll have everything and you can just put in your apartment. Like people really started reaching out. And I didn't even know that help was available because I never wanted anyone to know what I was going through. Wow. And I don't, did that answer your question? Yeah, that's that's amazing. I mean, I've never been my, myself in in a situation which I had to do something like that. Um, so I had no opinion about it, but I know that a lot of the women in my community that followed me um, when they reached out to me, they they you know they share things with me that they don't share with anybody else, and a lot of that has to do with you know feeling trapped, like no way out and they're really reaching out for help and um in in you know, so i'm so glad that we can share this information so if somebody wanted to get a hold of you join your coaching program for your uh you know um well yeah you're gonna do coaching and, and personal coaching and group coaching right so mm -hmm. um how can they get a hold of you so I am on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Ardene Garner. Um, I have a website, ArdeneGarner.com. So you can Google Ardene Garner and then you'd be able to get a hold of me on all social media pages. I love to interact with people. Um, I am a you know human service provider. So direct interaction with people is good. You can direct message me, email me. I think my number is available on some of those sites. You can call me, text me. I just love interacting with people and people need people. You know, yeah. I think sometimes with social media, we get caught behind the social media and we don't have that live or direct interaction anymore, but we human beings need other human beings. So it's very important to have that, um, contact and then we're in the middle of a pandemic and so we are supposed to be in isolation and this just doesn't help so feel free again to reach me ardene garner all social media sites um and that's my website address as well ardene garner.com awesome yeah and then in the um if you guys look in the um next of these videos I have put Ardenay's uh, website there and her contact information. Um, and I have tagged her as well. She is part of the Daring Greatly Driven community. Actually, um, you know, it's a safe place to 
talk and share and uh, and she's going to be listening you can talk her and that would be actually great because that way you can answer to somebody we all benefit from that so that'd be great oh absolutely and argentina i just want to thank you uh, for what you're doing i cannot wait to have a session with you i don't <laughs> want to talk to my husband about it. i don't know i don't know if he's familiar with this photography but i'm like i need to be there I need to do this photo session. I'm going to wait till spring, maybe when the yeah. governor allows us to travel to these different areas without having to be quarantined, quarantined for 14 yeah. days. But I definitely want a session because, again, as I'm starting to reveal more of what I considered a flaw, I want to take more photographs. And I, and I don't think I've ever shared this with you, but my mom used to always tell me that she wasn't photogenic. And so then I believed inherently that I wasn't photogenic. And so I always shied away from the camera. Like I would be in the back. And then when I did take pictures, I didn't notice anything outside of, oh, my shirt was messed up. Oh, there was lint. Oh, my forehead was shiny. So I never really saw the beauty until, like I said, on that day when I did that photo shoot for um, my class. Yeah. But I absolutely want to take some photographs with you. And I want you oh, to be the photographer. Oh, thank you. Oh, it's going to be great. We had to plan for that, you know, in spring, Chicago or Austin. Pick your favorite city. <laughs> spring, you know, uh, it's beautiful in Texas. Chicago is nasty. <laughs> well, we'll be Texas, Texas, it is. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, this has been just an amazing interview, Ardene. Thank you so much for, for um, sharing so much with you. And, um, we can't wait to see more of your comments and participation inside of the group and so glad to have you, you know, in this group. Thank you for having me, Argentina. Thank you all for viewing this. I appreciate all of you. And uh, my mantra is honor your passion and commit to action. So whatever you feel you're called and led to do, do it. And don't worry about the details. Thank oh, you. Beautiful. All right, guys. Thank you so much for um, some time with us i really hope that you guys got a good um benefit from this conversation and uh, just a reminder uh our next information is uh right here in this group this video. and uh looking forward for the next interview with um expert bye guys <laughs>